Hi, and welcome to Biostat Squid. In this video, we will talk about a big problem that often comes up in biostatistics, multiple testing. But don't worry, we will also cover some common ways of solving it. Let's dive in. So imagine you're eating Smarties. If we didn't have a solution for multiple testing, newspaper headlines would often, or more often I should say, be filled with news like this. As you can see, making multiple comparisons means multiple chances for a false positive. In this case, we tasted 20 Smarties colors, which obviously are not linked at all with baldness. We had a p-value of 0.05 which means a 5% chance of a false positive. And that is exactly what happened. One of the colors, just by chance, happened to be falsely, positively correlated with baldness. But it's the same with everything. If we did a 10-page survey about nuclear power plant proximity, milk consumption, age, number of pets, favorite ice cream color, musical taste, current sock color, and a few dozen other factors, you'll find that something is significantly correlated to cancer. The point is, the more tests, the more chance of observing at least one significant result, even if it's actually not significant. In biology, we often don't just do 20 tests, but thousands. Imagine the amount of false positives, even if we lower the p-value to 0.01. Thank goodness we have techniques to correct for multiple comparisons. For example, the Bonferroni correction method says that if you make n comparisons, you should use a p-value threshold of p lower than 0.05 divided by n. So imagine we want to test a thousand genes to see if they're correlated to being a morning person versus a night owl. We can choose a p-value of 0.05, that is, the probability of saying that a gene is significant when it is actually not is 5%. We're talking about a 5% chance of being wrong, 5% chance of saying a gene is linked to being a morning person when it is actually not. To be honest, 5% are pretty good odds. It would be fine if it were one gene. The problem is that we are not testing one gene, but a thousand. This already means that around 50 genes will be wrongly classified as significant. With the Bonferroni correction, we use a p-value of 0.05 divided by 1,000, so 0.00005. There is a 0.005% chance that we are wrong and the gene is actually not associated with being a morning person. The problem with the Bonferroni correction is that it is too conservative. Yes, it lowers the chances of false positives, but at what cost? We are also demanding much stronger correlations before we conclude they are statistically significant. So we get a lot of false negatives, genes that are less strongly correlated, but they are still correlated and will not be considered at all. So we'll miss a lot of interesting genes. Okay, time for another example. To make it easier to visualize, let's not talk about genes, but going to the beach. We test 20 different objects to see if they are associated with the beach. 
and these are our p-values. So if we set a p-value threshold of 0.05, it means 15 objects were significantly linked with the beach and five of them were not. Some objects, like sunglasses or a towel, have really low p-values because they are strongly correlated with going to the beach. Our p-value threshold is 0.05 meaning there is still a 5% probability that we classify an object as being correlated with going to the beach when it is actually not, just by chance. And this is exactly what happened. The cup of coffee was found statistically significant, when in fact it is not correlated with going to the beach. Okay, all you complete caffeine addicts out there might argue with me, but that is not the point. If we use our first method to correct for multiple testing, the Bonferroni correction, we would have to use a p-value of 0.0025. This means that the cup of coffee would no longer be considered associated with the beach. Nice! But check this out, we're losing some objects that would be interesting for us. For example, the floaty and the sunglasses are now false negatives. As you can see, this is not an ideal solution. Is there another way of solving the problem of multiple testing? Of course there is. The Bonferroni correction lowers the p-value for all objects. But what if we could control what happens to significant objects only? The false discovery rate, or FDR, is the proportion of false positives among all significant results. False positives, for example, are genes that are not statistically significant, so they are not interesting for us, but just by chance they got a p-value lower than 0.05. In our example, there is one false positive, the coffee, amongst 15 significant results, so the FDR is 1 divided by 15, so 6.7%. What we want to do is bring this number down. So within our significant results, reduce the number of falsely significant results. The first method proposed to control the FDR was Benjamini Hochberg procedure. There is a high probability, no pun intended, that I pronounced that wrong. But anyway, so um, we first had this BH procedure and soon afterwards the Q value was introduced as a more powerful approach to controlling the FDR. In both cases, we get a new list of corrected or adjusted p-values for each test. And we can just use this adjusted p-values as we would um, the normal p-values. So as a recap, a p-value of 0.05 means that 5% of all tests will result in false positives, more or less. A p-adjusted value of 0.05 means that 5% of significant results will result in false positives. Let's go back to our example. Up to now, we were just talking about p-values. Now we will get our q-values or p-adjusted values. And if we go with the q-value threshold of 0.05, it means we are willing to accept 0.75, so less than one object that's classified as a beach object when it is not. So basically a false positive. This is the false discovery rate. It's 0.05 multiplied by the number of significant results, so 15. So with this method, we're controlling the FDR. Using Q values allows us to decide how many false positives we are willing to accept among all the features that we call significant. It is up to us to decide the threshold, as it depends on the type of analysis. Perhaps you want to be more stringent or you don't mind having a couple of false positives. Using Q values is particularly useful when we want to make a lot of discoveries to filter out later on, especially large scale, like in genomics. For example, if you're doing a pilot study or exploratory analysis on genes correlated with Alzheimer's, you want to avoid losing potential interesting genes, but you also don't want a lot of false positives, so you can use Q-values for this. And that is all for today. Squid-tastic! I hope this video gave you a clear explanation of what is multiple testing and how to correct it. If you liked this video, please let me know and also let me know what other topics you would like to cover next. Have a great day and see you in the next one.